Hey everyone, welcome back to Contractor Growth Network. I'm Logan. And I'm Mike. And we're doing a bit of a spin today because just a bit. Just a bit. So this is, as you can see, if you're watching the YouTube video, not Chris. No, not, not, all, not at all Chris. Not at all Chris. Mike, go ahead and give us who is Mike, why are you here? Yeah, so I'm Mike Kyle. I'm part of the media team here. As of this week, I'm the junior content creator. Shout out to Aaron, who's my senior advisor right now. Uh, and I now work at CGN. I've been here. I'm ongoing number month, month number two. And I'm the one that creates all the content for social media. So anything that you see on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, I'm the man behind the scenes with it all. If you've been in contact with John, Jeremy, or Tyler, and you get, and you get hit up with a piece of content from them, I also probably created that as well. So I'm just this well-oiled content machine, as I like to call it. So Mike, how long have you been here for? Uh, two months. Two months. Okay. What's your background? Because when it comes to content, this is something that I think a lot of when I say a lot, most contractors know they need to be doing this. Mm -hmm. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to start. They're nervous. Um, so they end up doing nothing. Yep. So you're on the opposite end where you're like, just push this stuff out. So what is your background? How did you come to, I guess, love content? Yeah. So I started off really early in seventh grade. So at that time, you're what, like 11 years old at this point. Now I'm 24. So I've been in the game for quite a bit. And that was really at the time when YouTube itself started to really bubble and start to boom. And I and my cousins and a few of my friends, we just started creating videos and put them up on YouTube, just stupid stuff, us kind of fucking around just a little bit. And it just kind of develop this love of creating because not only can you put this out for other people to see, but it's also a work where you can be like, damn, I'm proud of that or damn, I made that. Um, and so I've always just kind of been chasing this thing. So whether it was doing YouTube videos in seventh grade to then going into sports writing during high school and then doing my own video projects uh, throughout college, I've always loved content creating because it's my outlet and my way to just communicate whatever it is, whether it's my hot takes on sports or like this, where I'm teaching somebody how to do something. Uh, just the way that you can utilize content in so many different facets and just express yourself. It's super fun and super cool for me. Okay, you threw out a couple different things there. How I do did. you define content? Oh, I've never been asked this before. Um, content for me is, I think you really break this down into three things and it's very cliche, but they're all tried and true. It's entertainment, it's informative, and it's valuable. What is it? When you say it is entertainment, informative and valuable whatever you're putting out i think and actually like that might be the best way to describe what content is if you put something out it's content does it does it have to be a podcast no it does not no con content i think can be anything i mean something as little as tweets and i'm somebody i love twitter mm -hmm. um i think on my twitter career i got over like a hundred and thirty thousand tweets oh my so God. i use this thing all the time it's my go-to platform uh, and so even just, you know, shooting out a stupid tweet when LeBron does a reverse 360 that just says, oh my goodness, in all caps, that's content. Like whatever it is, it could be something that small or it can be an hour long podcast. Anything in between there is all fair game too. So it's essentially the medium doesn't matter. Medium doesn't matter. So no. it could be audible or audio. It could be a video. Could and be I'm going to stop you there because that's what makes this great. And I, this, look, look at me interrupting you now, right? Because that's what makes this great is, you know, you don't have to be a great writer. You don't have to be somebody who's naturally great on camera. You don't have to be somebody who speaks well into a microphone. As long as you can just find one of those things that you're even remotely good at or even comfortable with, that's really all you need. Obviously, the ideal situation and something that I think I'm very blessed with is my ability to kind of do all three and do them at a relatively high level. But if you can just do one and make that your bread and butter, you're good to go. Yeah, because I think a, a lot of contractors, when they step into this world, I mean, I'm seeing them now where they're already saying like, should I be on TikTok? Should I be on mm -hmm. uh, Clubhouse? And I'm just thinking like to me, and maybe I'm off on this. I'm like, you need to master where your clients are first, which for most of us, you know, especially for homeowners, it's really Instagram and, and Facebook. Right. Like that's still king in this world. And people, to me, they were like, should I be on on TikTok? Should I be on uh, Snapchat? And I'm just thinking, mm -hmm. I'm like, look, the the primary audience of those, they're kids, mm -hmm. right? But, and I think a lot of people do this because they don't feel confident when it comes to content. So instead of saying, okay, well, I'm just gonna lean into Facebook or Instagram where my clients are, I'd rather go into something new because 
you know, I feel like I've already failed at Facebook and Instagram. So this is my way to get a, a quote unquote new start. Mm -hmm. But none of that stuff's really going to come, at least to me, none of that's going to come to fruition and pay off for another 20 years because the average age of someone on TikTok is like 13. Right. So, you know, am, am I off? Like, should you be on all platforms or should you stick with what you know first? I guess I think, laid out. I think you can do both. I personally like the idea of being everywhere because that just gives you the widest possible reach. And there are ways that you can manipulate the system to maximize all of your efforts and all of your energy. It's like one of the things that me and you talk about a lot is I have this master content spreadsheet and everything is sorted out and I can figure out where, it, where a piece of content's been posted on Instagram, LinkedIn, or Facebook. And I just have a way to track all of it. Uh, so just being able to take one piece of content and post it in three different spots, kind of transform it a little bit to match the platform. Uh, I'm really big on that because I've always been this one man band of trying to do everything in house and by myself. But to go back to your question there, I like that approach of you have to master your spot first, right? Master where your current audience is. But I think the thing that you also have to think about is remember Instagram, Instagram started off as a place for photographers. And when it first, when it, when it first popped off in 2012 and 2013, it was just, at that point, it really was just kids too. It was photographers, it was kids. Like I remember my very first Instagram post is a picture of my basketball hoop during a sunset. Like that's what it is. And now you look at it and how that demographic has changed and it's now the number one, the, the number one social media platform in the world and now everybody's on it. And I just think it's this natural cycle of progression that every social media platform takes is it starts off really niche and then it just grows and expands once it takes over in popularity. So I do think there's actually some validity in being first on a platform. So if you do want to go into TikTok or Clubhouse, and by the way, I'm going to put this on the record right now. I love Clubhouse. Just as a concept, that app is going to crush. And what, you, what is it? All right, so Clubhouse is an audio app where you and really anybody else who's on the app can join these rooms. And it's basically just a chat room. It's a vocal chat room instead of a written one, right? We're so used to like forums and chat rooms from, you know, the early 2000s where it's you and 30 other people just talking about, I don't know, the Charlotte Hornets, right? Well, Clubhouse is now the audio version of that. And so everyone's hosting these different rooms and, you know, they're shooting the, they're shooting the shit about their favorite topics or things that they know the best. And I think that's really interesting going forward. And you're already starting to see other platforms like Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. They're already trying to steal from it and create their own version of that. So when it comes to content, I hear a lot of people say, well, why do people care about what I think? You know, I'm not, I'm not somebody in the Kardashian family. No. I'm not that interesting. Why would I bother posting? Because I don't have that much to say. To me, this always comes down to number one, self-confidence. Um, do you know what you're talking about? And the answer for every contractor listening to this is yes, because you own a contracting business and by association, theoretically, you have a pretty good understanding of your craft, right? Or else you wouldn't be running your own business. So it starts with there and it starts off with confidence. And then the extension of that is, hey, there are people that need to know these kinds of things. Now, maybe they don't need to go full in depth as to how to put together a floor and install a floor, but if but we take that a step further and it's like oh if if a couple is getting their house redone or uh, an older couple is buying a house and they're building they're going to need to know that thing and so who are they going to look to they're going to look to you because they have no idea what you're what they have no idea themselves what this process is supposed to look like so just a fun example yesterday right me and you we were talking about allergy season because i was getting my shit kicked in in the office and you're like, go get a neti pot. All right, I got a neti pot and I'm reading the instructions and you know, they're instructions. You should be able to know how to use a neti pot off of that. Well, guess what? For whatever reason, the neti pot, the water wasn't coming out of my other nostril. If you guys don't know what a neti pot is, pretty simple. It's a little container. You pour one end through one nostril, it comes out the other, clears your sinuses up. So what did I do at three in the morning this morning? I watched a YouTube video on how to actually use one of these fucking things. And there, and like, there it was. All right, all of a sudden you're good. First try, got it. So you always have something to say of value. And it's just a matter of you believing in that enough to put that out. Is creating content a young person's game? No. What do you mean? I think that is the biggest misconception. Um, right? The older, the wiser. I'm 24 and I know my shit. There are other people that, are, that have 20 years of marketing experience that probably know way more than me. Have I been in this game a long time to where I can come on this podcast and articulate everything that you need to know? Yes. 
but there's always somebody else who's going to have more experience than you that can provide more insight or a different angle or a different approach on how to attack these certain platforms. And so, no, this, this isn't a young person's game. Anybody can do it. And, you know, we talked about it before, too. Like, do I have my phone with me? I do. No, I don't. Where's Where are my phones at right now? It's right here. All you need is this. All you need and, is this. And if you listen to the podcast, what is this? It, it's a phone. You're right. I'm sorry. We're, we're on video, too. So all you need is your phone. Because at the end of the day, it's what everybody has, has access to. Right? You don't need to spend $500 on a new Canon. You don't need to spend $1,000 on a red video camera. You literally just need your phone. Why? Because on every single platform, you can go straight to your phone and upload it wherever. Like the phone is the biggest cheat code. So, you know, one of the things that we started talking about in the office is, hey, let's just whip our phones out and start posting on Instagram stories, just random things happening in the office. So that's why you've been seeing a lot more just fun office content from us on our Instagram stories at contract at contractor growth network one for anybody listening. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, like you just need a phone. It's the universal communicator that brings us all together. Uh, of all the platforms out there, what's your favorite? Twitter. But Twitter, but here's the thing about Twitter though, is I know Twitter is almost dead. And Twitter's not dead in the sense of content being consumed. Twitter's dead in the sense that it's peaked in users. And like that that trail is slowly gonna go down. But for me, Twitter's the best because it's a combination of quick thoughts. There's comedy sprinkled in. It's my number one news feed. Like every time I think of, hey, do I want to take a break from Twitter? Well, no, you can't because you get all of your news from Twitter, right? And then also just the community aspect of Twitter of being able to directly communicate with anybody, with anybody. Like I have conversations with Gary Vaynerchuk on there from time to time, right? I can I can tweet LeBron, hey, nice shot. Is he going to respond? Absolutely not, right? But it, it opens the door for you in these kinds of ways that I don't think any other platform has been able to master. Yeah, I never got into Twitter really. I mean, I, I had it, but like, I don't like, I, I, I see how other people use it where it's straight up meant to be like in real time. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it's really more like good for like news and live action sports. Yes. Like those are like the two big plays on Twitter. There is nothing. It's, I can give you the perfect example. Just the other day, we had the final four game between UCLA and Gonzaga. That game was won on a buzzer beater, and the play before that with three seconds left, UCLA tied it. And everyone's thinking as they tied it, this game's going to overtime. The energy shift that Twitter had from, let's just say it was, uh, that game tipped off at, I think, 9. So the energy shift that Twitter had from 11.45 to 11.50, I've never seen anything like it. It was instant. It was this game's going to overtime to holy shit, Jalen Sugg just hit one of the most incredible shots we've ever seen. And there was just this, there was just this community aspect of it because everybody was tweeting about it. You scrolled down your timeline and it was one after another, after another, all about this game. And uh, the great thing about Twitter then too, by I guess extension is, you know, you can tailor your timeline in that way. So like if I only want to follow people talking about sports, well, congratulations. That's what my timeline's going to be straight sports. If I want news, I can sprinkle that into. If I want, I don't know, video games or contractors or whatever the case is, I can get that. So it's a it's a better way, I think, to form a community because you can just see what everybody's posting at the same time, pretty much all at once, right? Because if you open up Twitter, you're going to see six tweets all in a row. Whereas if you scroll for 20 seconds, that's when you get six Instagram posts. It's so more instant on Twitter. Okay, Mike, your dad runs his own business. What yep. what social media platform makes the most sense for him? Uh, for my dad, I think LinkedIn makes the most sense for him because Why? he works with a lot. So he works uh, in he works in he works in industrial products. So he spells he sells specialty steels. Excuse me. And so he needs to go to the decision maker. And so when he's trying to get into all these steel mills and factories, he needs to find those people. So I think that LinkedIn for him would be the best. And especially because he does have such a specialty product. It's not really something that I think a lot of people would find interesting maybe on Facebook uh, because Facebook is so broad. Uh, but where LinkedIn, he can get so specific and so narrow uh, that I think it could help him. Okay. What about contractors? Like what would make sense uh, for them? I love opinion? Instagram. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm cutting you off. I love Instagram. Uh, just because, you know, what contractors do is so visual and, you know, you have the ability to do before and after pictures. You can do tutorials. You can do, you can do how to content. The 
avenues that you can utilize Instagram, I think, is beautiful as a contractor. I mean, just get, give me an industry right now. Plumbing. All right. So for plumbing, this is simple, right? We all have these random problems that just pop up. Toilet's not working, since sink's backed up, whatever the case is. Well, congratulations. I just gave you two pieces of the content right there on how to, right? On, on Instagram? Yes. Okay. So let me hit you with this. How many people, let's think about this because this is where you combine content with the whole business operations. Mm -hmm. If your toilet is backed up or it's leaking, mm -hmm. does Mike hop on Twitter to figure out how to stop it? On Twitter, maybe. I'm sorry, Instagram. Uh, all right, I, I, so, on, so I think that's where we talk a lot about cross-trafficking and cross-referencing. Cat, what do you mean? Right. So I'm a big proponent, and this is just because of my background of me having to do everything by myself before, but literally before I got here, um, where I could take one piece of content and I can post it onto Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all at once. I'll do it on different days so it doesn't oversaturate the field. Uh, but what I mean by, but, but what that does is, okay, we'll have it on Instagram just to kind of show the process. But then on Facebook, you can post that exact same thing and have a longer caption and guide people through it. So it really is just a ref, it's just a matter of positioning it in a way that makes sense on the platform. So are people searching for toilet issues on Instagram? No, but if you show a before and after picture of, hey, this is what the toilet looked like before, and then we came in and we cleaned it up and made it nice and, and we made it look nice or whatever, that's gonna play much better on Instagram than it would on Facebook. But if we have a if we have a problem where, hey, pipes busted, what are we gonna do? Well, let's show that to Facebook and give a step-by-step -step process on how to fix it, what we do, and what our process is. So to me, that, that feels more like it's branding. Correct. It's all it, branding. Okay. So, so, okay. So let's talk about that because I think a lot of people have the understanding that if I post uh, a before and after of a toilet, I'm going to get a bunch of phone calls right now mm -hmm. uh, you know, for me to come out and fix people's toilets. Right. Does it not work like that? No, because social media is a juggernaut. And this is get, like, I'm going to say this, and I'm not going to have any regret saying this, Social media is like climbing a mountain that you are 99% never going to conquer because that monster is always changing. It's always terraforming and you never know what's going to come next, right? Me and Aaron have these conversations all the time about the YouTube algorithm because, you know, we're trying to grow our YouTube channel and it's just like every single month, this fucking thing is changing, right? But that's where I think the fun is. And that's where I think my mindset of we're going to find a way really helps because if you can get in that zone of I'm going to take down the beast, oh my, anything's possible. Anything's possible, right? I've been here for two months, like I said, and we've already seen our Instagram grow by 25% since I've been here. Like, it's just a matter of taking enough swings and knowing that, hey, I only need to hit four home runs for 10 leads to come in, right? I love this idea because I've experienced this firsthand. I've had YouTube videos have 50,000 views. I've had YouTube videos have 200 views. I've had YouTube videos have five views. But guess what? I know all I need is to give myself the opportunity to have a 50,000 view video and I'm set. All you need is one. Okay, so let's talk about that opportunity because most people uh, refuse to do anything unless Correct. it's gonna be a grand slam. Correct. So what do you mean by when you say you just see more at-bats? There's no, I actually, I made the same analogy during my uh, video that we posted on YouTube about uh, how to grow your business using social media. There's no penalty for posting more on Instagram, on Facebook, wherever. There is no penalty, right? We have this in our heads of, well, if I post too much, people are going to get annoyed. Well, guess what? They unfriend you. <laughs> so what? You didn't talk to them for the past three years anyway, right? There's no penalty. In fact, they want you to post more, right? Because it helps them. It helps them grow their business. It helps them uh, sell more ad space. It helps them keep people on the platform. So they actually want you to post as much as possible. And then even a step further, like, again, there's no punishment for posting or for shooting too much or taking, you know, at bat swings, whatever analogy you want to use, right? One of the quotes that I actually just put up on our own Instagram was from NBA player Dion Waiters that said, "I'd rather go 0 for 30 than 0 for 9 because if you go 0 for 30 or because if you go 0 for 9, that means that you that, that means that you stop shooting." Excuse me. So, it's just keep swinging, keep shooting because you're gonna hit one. You're not gonna get benched for going 0 for 9. 
because there is no benching in this game, right? This isn't sports. This isn't class where you're going to get an F if you, if you post something and you only get one like. No one cares. Just post. So, but I mean, most people, they, they go, well, I don't, Logan, I don't really do Facebook. What do you say to that? Contractor, business owner, I don't really do Facebook, Mike. If I told you that your clients are all in the city of Charlotte, would you drive the 30 minutes to go to Charlotte to go meet up with them? The answer is yes. Yeah, 100%. The answer is yes. So if I told you that, shit, 90% of your clientele is on Facebook, wh wouldn't you go to Facebook, right? If I, t if it's just, it's, it's mind blowing. It really is where the answers are right in front of you. We're, and even so, we're giving you the answers here at CGN and you just aren't taking it. So what's, what's the problem? Like, why, why aren't people taking it, you think? I think it goes down to a few things. Fear is the obvious one. Just people Fe are just scared. Fe people fear of what? Just, yeah, people are just scared to post. Uh, uh, like, like, what's the downside? I mean, like... So, right, because it's high school. Like, social media, by and large, admittedly, is high school. Where, hey, I'm insecure about, you know, my hobbies or interests or what I do professionally. And I don't want to post this. Or I want to keep it cl close to the chest, right? Mm -hmm. Um and we just get in this popularity contest kind of mindset, right? Where if we don't post anything, nobody's going to notice us, right? We're just going to kind of blend in with the crowd. And that's that's the biggest issue, I think. But then you do kind of break it down in the sense of people are so hesitant, like, well, I don't know what to post. Well, guess what? If you reach out to me, like literally DM us on Instagram and I will tell you what to post for your field. It is that easy. I think me and Aaron, we were talking about this before... Uh, we started recording uh, the video, the how to grow your business using social media video. And I was just like, Aaron, give me give me an industry. And he said painting. And I rattled off 10, 10 posts I could do right now for that industry. It's so easy. And like that's the thing. You don't have to reinvent, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. If you get it down once and you have an idea of, okay, here's 10 posts I'm going to do, I would literally just recycle those same 10 ideas every single week. What's the difference between recording and documenting? Uh, recording, I think is more of the uh, creation process, whereas document is just point and shoot. Uh, and what I mean by that is just kind of a, just go a step further with that is recording is planning, right? And you'll waste time, um, brainstorming what you're going to say for an hour, doing 10 different takes to make sure that you get it right. That's recording. And then you have to go through and edit the whole thing, right? And that takes a ton of time. Documenting is pulling out your phone, pointing the phone to you, Logan, and saying, talk about blank, and you just go, right? Or showing something that's going on in the office, like showing Turner writing a blog, showing Aaron editing a video. That's documenting. And the difference there is, is number one, time saved, right? You don't have to spend an hour scripting what you're going to say. You don't have to spend two hours editing and 45 minutes filming. No, you're just like, Logan. Talk about putting pricing on your website. That's something you know off the back of your hand, and you're just good to go. So, so let's let's jam on that for a second. So, a lot of people I think have this idea that you have to create something perfect, and you have to create a specific piece of. Well, I think this is what the audiences want to hear about. But what you're talking about is you just said you know that's like the back of your hand. Mm -hmm. So, is that where you suggest people start? Is, yes. What start. You, go, start go with. Ahead. Start with what you know. Why? Because it's the thing you are the most confident in. And that kind of circles back and ties back everything we were just saying about the fear of posting, right? You have to be able to have some level of confidence in knowing what you're going to talk about and knowing your capabilities in discussing this topic. So being able to just start with what you know. So for me, if I, if I had to start a podcast about anything right now, I'm starting it on sports, specifically basketball. If I had to go super niche, I'm going to start it on Carolina and Charlotte Hornets basketball. And then from there, we can kind of expand could, out and could you out. Could you uh, do like a weekly podcast on just the Hornets? Yes, without a doubt. Oh, wow. Without a doubt. And the Hornets, if for, you, for those of you who aren't in Charlotte, they are now just a really bubbling team. But for the past, I don't know, five, six, seven years, they've been mediocre. And I could still find a way. So you're almost just like a sports broadcaster when you do these podcasts. Is that right? Are you just like going back and just recapping games? Like, what would you talk about when it comes to the Charlotte Hornets? Yeah, so I think... 
every week we would do a game recap. So if the Hornets played four games in that podcast, you would recap all four games. And then you look at segment two, and that would be looking forward to the next week of games. So if we got the Lakers in town, if we got the Rockets and the Clippers, all right, well, let's spend let's spend 10 minutes on each breaking down the matchups and what that looks like. And then you can do a player spotlight. Who is the player who's been hot as of late that we can talk about? Who's a player that we think needs more minutes? We can talk about them. Is there somebody in the free agent pool that we can bring on uh, during free agency or whatever the case is, right? So just right there, I just gave you four different segments off the top of my head. And this whole podcast, by the way, is that, right? I mean, we're just like, what are we going to talk about? Well, let's talk about media and mindset. All right, hit record. Let's go. And here we are. So when you're listening to this, everybody, you're probably thinking, okay, this Mike guy, this is what he's been doing for years and years and years full time. Mike, what'd you do more than, you know, before you came here? Uh, I worked at Walmart for eight months. He worked at Walmart. So you're working at Walmart now. And and are you doing uh, content, you know, on the side? Like, yes. okay, so walk me through that because this is yep. when we interview you and I was like, I asked a blunt question. I was like, yep. Dude, I, I gotta be honest, man. Like, you're at Walmart right now, and now you want to go into content creation. Like, where's the gap, or, or or why is there a gap there? Why aren't you doing something market or media related right now? Walk me through that. Yeah, so I graduated college in 2019 in December, and I didn't have a job because I was always my whole goal when I got out of college was to work for myself. And I taught this is nothing new to this is nothing new to Logan, by the way. Like we we went over all of this during my interview. And I said, my whole goal when I got out of college was to find a way to work for myself. I feel like I have that kind of alpha personality, entrepreneurship DNA. My dad owns his own business that we kind of briefly discussed. So it's in me. And I was always gunning for that in college because I never felt like it made sense to me to take an internship when there's so much abundance in the system between trying to start your own YouTube channel, podcast, social media, brand, whatever the case is. Well, it's just like, well, fuck, if I get out of class... Instead of trying to do this for and try, instead of trying to do this for somebody else, I'm gonna try and do this for myself. Now, ultimately, that didn't work out. So I got out of I got out of college, didn't have a job, and then pandemic hit like right away, and it was just like fuck, market crashed. I've never seen anything like this before, where you went on Indeed, uh, ZipRecruiter, wherever, and you click a job posting, and it just said this or this uh, this opportunity is closed or whatever it said, and just every single one, it was no, 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 unavailable, unavailable, unavailable. And then, so you got to bite the bullet. You got to bite the bullet. And so for me, that was working at Walmart because at the end of the day, money needed to come in, right? Uh, Parents started charging me for rent and things like that. And it was just like, all right, got to sack up, eat shit for a little bit. But I always knew that it was going to work out for me because I knew what my resume was. And you called this my hype moment during my interview where I said, you know, I worked for the Cavs during the NBA Finals and for, and throughout the entirety of the 2018 playoffs. I broke the news that Kemba Walker was leaving Charlotte to go to Boston. I've hosted a dozen podcasts. I've produced over 200 videos. I had all the steps and requirements necessary for me to do this at the professional level. And for me, it was always a matter of when, not if. And that was just the thing that I always kept telling myself, kept telling my parents, kept telling my friends, because they would come to me and it's just like, you know, you got to figure this shit out. You're like, you're working at Walmart. You went to school for four and a half years. I'm like, yeah, I know, but don't worry. I got this. So you've always been like a respect the process person versus let's just only harp on the outcome. Yes, because for me, there's a lot of fun in the process, but then also, right, if you are a contractor who owns your own business, right, like that's the fucking dream. Like that's like you, I don't know how lucky contractors and business owners in general think that they are because they are like for me owning my own business. And for right now, like for me, I want to eventually create fantasy football content full time. It's like, that's the thing that I do on the side right now. And I just look at all these entrepreneurs, contractors or otherwise. And it's just like, damn, you are so lucky that you are being able to make a living doing this shit, doing the thing that you love. Because I would kill to be in that position right now. No offense to you, by the way, as as I say all that, but you already know this thing. You already know these things. So I just look at it where it's like, damn, man, that's so fucking cool. So why don't you then? It's 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 what I it's the whole Walmart thing. It's yeah. kind of just go back to that, right? Gotta make ends meet. And like also not to mention, hey, I moved eight hours away. I'm from Cleveland. And I've always wanted to get down to Charlotte, but you look at how much money I got in my bank account. It's like, yeah, you can make this work for, I don't know, six months or whatever the case is. But then what happens, right? So I'm cool with taking this. 
I'm, I'm going to use the word security blanket. You know what I mean by this? It's like, again, these are all conversations. What, what do you mean? We, because as everybody's like listening to this now, and they're like, ooh, right. there's about to be a discussion so, off right. air. Yeah. So, so me and Logan, like we had like a legit 15 minute back and forth on this during my interview because he very transparently asked me, hey, what's your goal? Because I have my fantasy content on my resume. He's like, what is this? And I told him straight up. I said, this is the thing that I'm doing right now. It's the thing that I devote. I swear on my life. It, I think I did the math. It is 27.9 real time days into fantasy football every single year. And if I'm going to make it in anything, it's going to be that. And so we had this conversation real early because you're like, well, how long do you plan on staying here then if I bring you on? And we went through it. I'm like, I'm here. I expect it to be at this point by the end of the year. And in three years, it should be here. We'll see what happens. And credit to you. You're like, I like this. I like th I like this kid. He knows what he's doing. He's clearly got the background for it. And I'm going to bring you on. So I think that says more about you than anything else, because I know a lot of people that would be intimidated by that fact. But you're just like, I think maybe you, I honestly think maybe you liked it. Like, I think that endeared me to you more. The fact that I was so open and so overly ambitious about what I wanted to do. So what I will say is this, is I recognize that everybody here, this is not their end all be all. Would I like to have everybody for a long time? Yeah. But I also recognize that I'm a process. This is going to sound shitty for both of you guys That's listening fine. to this call. Uh, I'm a process over people person, meaning I am all about let's get everything set up. And then it's the next man up mentality. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady's great, but can Tom Brady win a Super Bowl without having the cast he had around him this year? No. So that's something that I think a lot of uh, business owners do is, is we all fear like, well, you know, if I bring this person in and I train them and they leave in a year, 18 months, two years, whatever it is, you know, like what's going to happen. But in reality, if I look back at where we were a year ago versus where we are now, we're a completely different company. So mm -hmm. if in a year from now, if Mike goes, look, dude. I don't think you know this, like realize this, but with the 17th game out of the NFL, I got extra income coming in. I'm out. Well, we're in a completely different spot at that point. And maybe what I find is a new Mike, somebody who's like obsessed with content for contractors or mm -hmm. so whatever it is where it's like, yo, this is like, so it's, it's literally just the, like people are going to come and go. Yep. And the last thing that, that I want to do personally as a business owner is keep somebody around that they don't want to necessarily be around. It's like being in a relationship with somebody and you just don't want to break up with them. Mm -hmm. And it's awkward, but because you think you're doing it better for them, but in reality, they don't want to be there either. So right. if you set the systems up and the process is up where it's now in this place where it's plug and play, right? People can kind of come and go because that's the nature of this world, especially when it comes to millennials and Gen Z's, like we kind of stick and move a lot. Yep. Um, I recognize that, but if the entire department, if the entire everything is built around one person's mind, like if, if the, if literally the entire media side of things was like, all right, you know, Mike, don't record anything. Don't put anything down. Don't create any systems. You're just going to handle it all. If you then all of a sudden said, okay, this is my two weeks. Now we're screwed. Mm -hmm. But if we actually had the systems and the processes set up when Mike steps out, then somebody else, you know, Mike 2.0 can step in and we don't miss a beat, which is kind of right. like how we had it before where we had Alex before this. Alex was in here. He was very organized. We knew what a lot of stuff was. You and Aaron are now in here. There are different systems and processes, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like we were starting from square one. We right. didn't, you know, we had old content. We had old footage. We had stuff already going. Mm -hmm. And it's not, I mean, you know, I had this with Wayne as well when we did the, our podcast and stuff. So it's, it's not any different when it comes to like, you know, moving people in and out, you're going to get new bodies in and out. But if you don't build like the general systems, then that's when you really get in trouble. Yeah. And I, I got, I got two things to say to that. Number one, I like credit to you for allowing me, Aaron, to kind of step in and create our own systems. Like, I guess just kind of talking about it. I have a micro content spreadsheet that where every single time a podcast is created, uh, is, what, what, what is micro content? So yeah. So micro content is any kind of clip from a longer piece. So for example, like an hour long podcast, like a five minute clip of that podcast is considered micro content. Uh, if we pull a quote from a Facebook live and we post it on Instagram, that's considered micro content. So, so it's essentially just clipping out. So like, right. cause you see the, be, the best moment, the nuggets, the best moments, okay. highlights. Like, correct. Got yes. It. So I have this micro content spreadsheet where every time a CSC Facebook live happens, I'll get, I'll grab that and I will chop that up into 10 different highlights. Anytime a podcast happens, I'll do the exact same thing. 
And I have this spreadsheet now where everybody in the company has it and they just pull from it, like the best clips and moments. And I have it sorted by the topic, by uh, what the headline is, or like the main point, where it's been posted. And then I have links to all of it, like to, to the individual clips. So for example, Laura uses it now for Facebook ads. We have Chris and his sales assassins. They use it now if they just need to get somebody over the edge and they'll say, hey, hey, check out this clip. Like for example, Chris walked in and said, hey, I need a clip that talks about price and I need one that talks about business processes. I'm like, all right, cool, here you go. And I sent him to right off the bat. Um, so like that's an example of one of the systems that I came in and I created. And again, credit to you for allowing that. So, so let, let me just touch on that real fast before we move on, because that's an unbelievably powerful tool that we have. Yes. So first off, this is not something that as the business owner, you should be necessarily like striving to do yourself because you, it's, if you're, yeah, it's, it's impossible. It's, I mean, you're, you do this, this yes, is your I full do, time. I do that. Yes. I do this as a full, I do, right, remember, I do this full time and I do this on the side. And I've done it on the side by myself for so long. And that's why I'm so happy that I have Aaron with me too. So when you guys are listening to this, so this is the whole idea of like the rich are getting richer of, you know, why is there this huge wealth gap? There's a lot of reasons. But one of the biggest things is once you have enough money, like let's say, you, you know, the, the fastest way to make $100,000, let's say if, if you have, you know, no money to make $100,000, it's going to be tough. But if you've got, let's say $10 million in the bank, to make a hundred grand, all you gotta do is invest it. And in, you know, in a year, you're gonna make that yep. money pretty fast, you know, or you're even shorter than that. So with all this stuff, this is what happens is when you build the systems, you build this team up, it's when you get out of your own way, you can start to hire the Mikes and the Aaron's, yep. which what that'll do is the acceleration of the company will get better and better and better and better. And you get, you know, faster at everything that you're doing more profitable, you make more money, more, and you, and the best part is you get to actually spend more family time with it all. But if you're trying to do everything yourself, mm -hmm. you'll never get out of your own way and you'll always be stuck because it is very hard to do everything that we're talking about without having a full team. Like yeah. we talk to contractors all the time that are like, oh, I could do this stuff in-house. I'm like, okay, cool. And we talk about it because I know how long it takes us over here as a marketing and media sales agency. Yep. This is all we do full time. And when they're like, yeah, I think I can write a blog in about a half an hour. It's just like, good luck. Yeah. Like it takes us and this is all we do. It takes us three, four, five hours to do. Mm -hmm. So if you think you can do it in a half an hour better than how, you know, we're going to do it. Like, you know, at some point, can you, you know, should you be doing it in house? That makes sense. But outsource, that's all you gotta just mm -hmm. out, you know, find your own mic, outsource this stuff like you can do like this is whenever people come to us and say like do you do videos like we do but i prefer you contractor do stuff in-house because you'll now start to see what works and what doesn't work and it's very hard to outsource certain aspects of the company yeah for sure um i do want to go back to the point of you got to you saying talking about like systems and people and process over people right i do want to just very quickly clarify like you know when i'm here i come in and i bust my ass Right. I think you've noticed that. And I think everybody else has noted that too, where it's, Hey, Mike's doing his shit. He's doing his job. Right. So I, and I also kind of make it a personal goal, right? Cause I like being liked and I like doing a good job. I've always had this hard work ethic in me to where if I leave or God forbid you fire me, I want you to have some level of regret when you do it. Right. Because I want to be able to stick it to you where it's like, damn, I don't know if we'll, be, if we'll be able to find another mic who can operate at the same level as he was. So that's kind of the mindset that I take into work every single day because I just want to be able to stick it to anybody where it's like, damn, I miss Mike. Damn, I missed out. Dang, remember when Mike did this? So let, let, let's not get that confused. I'm not just coming over here, giving my systems and then dipping. No, I'm here to leave an impact on this thing. I love it. So let's wrap it up with this. So we're actually adding on, this will be the first episode if you listen to it right now, but a spinoff podcast, because we're, you know, at the end of the day, you know, when you think about how most small businesses market themselves and how they acquire customers, everybody does it very differently than how they buy. We all consume content. We watch videos, we watch uh, commercials, all this stuff. And then, you know, after seeing enough of it, that's when we buy. But when contractors turn around, they get frustrated. Oh, this person didn't want to buy from me. It's like, yeah, because today was the first day they ever heard of you. Mm -hmm. Why would they spend, you know, a f like an entire year's salary to remodel their home when today's the first day they ever met you? So, Content is key. So we have a spinoff content. Uh, I'm sorry, podcast. Mike, what's it called? The podcast is called the Content Machine Podcast. Content Machine Podcast. So if you listen to it now on that platform, 
this was episode one. If not, make sure you guys also download that. We'll add the uh, the link, I guess, in the show notes to this yeah, one. Yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah we'll, do, we'll, yeah, we'll add the link to the show notes to this one. We're going to still do the normal podcast stuff, but we're just going to continue to spread wider and wider and wider because we are here for contractor uh, industry domination, realistically. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, simple enough. So everybody, thank you very much. And to, to put this all in a nice bow, if you are not in our Facebook group, Common Sense Contracting, go on Facebook, join it. You will learn so many helpful things. It's a fantastic community of other like-minded contractors trying to really retrain how homeowners buy from contractors because the system's broken and we're here to help guide and facilitate everything changing. Mike, thanks for joining me, man. Thank you for having me on. See you guys.